Over the next several videos, we're going to take a look into probability and counting. And counting is something that we've done all of our lives. It's something that we probably think that we're pretty decent at. However, it turns out that if we want to count very large numbers of items, that there's a lot of intricacies as we try to formalize that process and try to do it well, and that the, the basic idea of counting has a lot of really interesting angles that we can take a look at. And that's what we're going to investigate over the next several videos. So let's begin with this specific example. What is the probability of taking some coin and flipping it heads twice in a row? So let me take uh, one single flip of my coin, and there's two different possibilities that can come up. Either I can flip my coin and I'm going to have it come up heads, or I can flip it and it's going to come up tails. So there's two different cases. Those two cases are equally likely, and we're going to say that there's a 50% chance it's going to be heads, and there's going to be a 50% chance that it's going to be tails. So now let's count all the possibilities if I flip it a second time. So let me suppose, first of all, that I, I begin with it being heads. That was my first flip. So I'm going to look down here as flip, and then for the second flip, what I get is a second heads. That's one possibility, heads, heads. The other one is I begin with my heads that I have here, and I'm going to flip a second time, and it becomes tails. Or it could be that I'm going to start with my tails, and I'm going to flip it, and it's going to become heads, or start with my tails, and I flip it, and it's going to become tails. So what we really get is that after there's two flips, there's going to be these four different cases. One of them is heads, heads, and then heads, tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. So, since there's four cases, and all four cases are equally likely, this is not a weighted coin, it's just as likely it flips up heads as it does tails, then the probability of it being two heads in a row is going to be one quarter. And the way I deduce this is that there's four possibilities, that's where the quarter is going to come down. One of them is the correct one, the one I'm interested in. So there's one out of four possibilities, or in other words, this 25. As these examples get more complicated, we want a systematic way to be able to list all the different possibilities. And we do that by something called a tree diagram. So what I'm going to overlay on my pennies here is that I'm going to begin at some starting point, and that the white lines are going to thread and connect the possibilities. So for example, after we started, it diverged into the two different cases. That first flip could either be the heads or the tails. And then, if it happened to be that it was going to be a heads, that that was going to diverge into these two different possibilities. And if it was a tail, then that was going to diverge in the two different possibilities. And indeed, we could go a little bit further here. Suppose I was interested in what happened after that third coin. Well, I've got four of these cases that get a little bit too much to draw it all on the same screen, but, but let me start from here and try to split this into two different cases. And then when I flip the third coin, there's two different cases as well. It goes tails, heads, heads, or tails, heads, tails. And then from each of these possibilities, it would have a similar splitting. We could go down into the fourth flip, the fifth flip, and every time this tree diagram would get increasingly complicated. What we're now going to do is standardize some of our notation and terminology. So I'm going to refer to a sample space. This is all of the different possibilities. It's some set, and it lists out all the possible possibilities in whatever particular example I'm talking about. So for example, in the flipping coins twice example, the sample space is all of the pairs of coins that have been flipped. So for example, heads, heads is one such pair in this larger sample space. And what we'd seen was that there were actually four different possibilities. So this sample space is a set with four entries, these four different pairs of coins. Then I could be focused specifically on a specific event within this larger sample space. And this is going to be denoted by the symbol E and refers to some subset of the larger sample space S. So in the example we were looking at, we were interested in the particular pairing heads, heads. So the set that only contains that one pair, the one pair heads, heads, is a subset of all of the possibilities. It's a subset of, subset of the sample space and is a specific event. 
We then can refer to the probability that an event occurs, and, and we write it like this. The P denotes probability, and you say the probability of a specific event living inside of this larger sample space. And in our specific example, we said that the probability, notice how we denoted it with P, of the heads heads, I just gave it some name, heads hyphen heads, is equal to the 0 0.25. Now, let's think back to how we computed this probability. What we said was that there was one event that we were interested in, the heads heads, and that there were a total of four possible events. The sample space had four different items in it. And then we just said, well, it's one divided by four. So that pattern, that rule is true generally if all of the outcomes are equally likely. And for a coin, that is the case. It's equally likely that we flip a heads or a tails at any particular stage. And since we do that twice, all of those four outcomes are equally likely. So when that is the case, if I'm interested in figuring out the probability of an event, we can say, well, well, what is the size of the event that we're interested in? in? The example we saw where it was only heads, heads, there was only one thing we were interested in, so it was one. And then we divide that by the total size of our sample space. In our example, that was four. And we can formalize this as saying that it is n of e over n of s, where n denotes the number of elements in our event divided by the number of elements inside of our sample space. So in our specific example, we were going to say that the, the number in the heads heads situation, they, there was just going to be the one of them. However, the number in the total sample space, there was four possibilities. So we were going to say there was four of them. And that's why we were going to say that the probability of getting the heads heads was the one divided by four. So this rule generalizes the intuition that we had in that more simplistic example. In this example, it's very similar to the previous one, but with a twist. The event that I'm interested in is no longer flipping a heads and then another heads. What I'm interested in this situation is where I've got one head and one tail, but I don't care which order it comes in. It could be heads then tails, or it could be tails then heads. I don't mind. So let's look at the four different possibilities as we had before, but now the ones that we're interested in change. Now we're interested in the two yellow ones where it goes the heads and the tails and the tails and the heads. Those are the two pairs that I'm interested in. In other words, the size of my event is now two. The size of my sample space hasn't changed. There's still these four different possibilities. It's just that I've changed what I'm interested in. And so the probability of getting one head and one tail in, in any order where we don't care about the order is going to be the number of elements in my event, which is two. That's why I write two over here, divided by the number of elements in my sample space, which is the four as it was before. And so I get a 50% probability. So the key thing to note here is that you should be paying attention to two computations. One is the total size of your sample space. You do that every time. But additionally, you have to look at how many elements are there going to be in my event that I'm interested in. And in this case, there was two. In the prior case, there was only one.